Hello all, Isabella Sebastiani here. I hope you are having a great day and welcome to our discussion on John Bowlby. Similar to last mini lecture, I want to note that a phone with a camera that reads QR codes is recommended to get the most out of this experience. If that is not possible for you, then you can open the PowerPoint that I am presenting on and click the QR code, which should take you to an external page. I will demonstrate this for you in a couple of slides. Now, let's get started on learning about John Bowlby. Today, we will be focusing on John Bowlby, his career, and how he was influenced by and influenced Donald Winnicott and Mary Ainsworth. To start, here are three objectives for this mini lecture. The first objective is to show understanding through explanation of who John Bowlby is and how his primary mentors and mentees affected his work. The second objective is to explain and give examples of his mentors and mentees and their contributions. The third objective is to encourage reflection on your own mentors and mentees throughout your life. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to show understanding through explanation of who John Bowlby is and how his primary mentor and mentees affected his work. You should also be able to explain and give examples of his mentor and mentee that are discussed in this presentation. And finally, you should reflect on your own mentors and mentees throughout your life. Objectives are meant to guide you through your learning process and are ways to measure your own learning. Let's get started. Before we dive into who Bowlby is, I encourage you to pause the video and take a moment to reflect on the following questions. Who has been the biggest mentor in your life? What was that relationship like? Then scan the QR code with your phone and post your answer under the prompt on the Padlet. If scanning the QR code does not work, open the PowerPoint and click the QR code and it should take you directly to the Padlet, just like this. Only answer the first questions. The other question should be answered towards the end of the presentation. Who is John Bowlby? Bowlby, who is depicted on this slide, was a 20th century British psychologist, psychiatrist, and psychoanalyst, who was born on February 26, 1907, and passed away on September 2, 1990. Bowlby is best known as the originator of attachment theory, which explains the innate need in young children to develop a close emotional bond with their caregiver. Bowlby aimed to further understand and investigate this observed phenomenon, contributing priceless knowledge to the child development field through the communication of his attachment theory. Bowlby First, Bowlby's first experience working with children was at Priory Gates School, where he worked with maladapted and delinquent children. As previously mentioned, Bowlby is best known as the originator of attachment theory. His attachment theory stemmed from his own curiosity surrounding the problem of separation from a primary caregiver, which was heightened due to his work with children who were separated from their primary caregivers during World War II. Bowlby's work and career was influenced by and also influenced many. The main two people that will be discussed during this lecture who are both influenced by and helped influence Bowlby's work are Donald Winnicott and Mary Ainsworth. Mentors are those who can support, advise, and guide you through aspects of life. While Donald Winnicott was not an official mentor, Winnicott had immense influence on Bowlby's work and career. Not all mentors are official, but that does not nullify their impact on your life. Mary Ainsworth drew influence from Bowlby's thoughts on attachment and also influenced Bowlby's attachment theory via the strange situation. Bowlby's best known publications 
are attachment and loss and a secure base. A secure base is now widely recognized as the most productive conceptual framework within which to organize the evidence for attachment theory. Donald Winnicott, who is depicted on the slide, was an English pediatrician and psychoanalyst who was quite influential in developmental psychology. Winnicott is best known for his ideas on true self and false self and the good enough parent. He believed that the true and false selves began in infancy, with the true self fostered by a welcoming and reassuring mother and the false self fostered by a lack of attuned caregiving. This can be connected to secure and insecure attachments, which are pivotal aspects of attachment theory. It is important to note that not every infant's needs must be met with perfect attunement. That's impossible. This is where the good enough parent comes in. Winnicott thought that parents did not need to be perfectly attuned, but just ordinarily devoted or good enough, if you will, to protect the baby from experiencing overwhelming extremes of emotional or physical discomfort and distress. Bowlby and Winnicott were one of the first to explain the importance of social interactions at an early age. They worked together and challenged each other throughout their careers, pushing each other to succeed and ev even further and think even deeper. Mary Ainsworth, who is depicted on the slide, is an American Canadian developmental psychologist who is known for her structured observation technique known as the strange situation and development of the different types of attachment styles. She's also credited for her contributions and introduction of the secure base to Bowlby. During Ainsworth's study of infant mother attachment patterns, she devised the strange situation, which assessed an infant's personal attachment behavior by evoking the infant's reaction when encountering stress. Through the strange situation, Ainsworth was able to identify four main attachment styles, secure, anxious avoidant, anxious resistant, and disorganized attachment styles. Bowlby and Ainsworth worked together investigating the effects of maternal separation on child development. Bowlby provided the initial blueprint, while Ainsworth provided proof through the strange situation. With Bowlby's mentors and mentees that we have discussed in mind, I invite you to scan the QR code and answer the following questions. Can you think of anyone you have influenced or mentored? What was that relationship like? Similar to before, if you cannot scan the QR code, I invite you to click the QR code on the PowerPoint presentation to be directed to the Padlet, just like this. In the words of Bulby, Life is best organized as a series of daring adventures from a secure base. I think this quote encompasses the heart of attachment theory, which is the bond between a primary caregiver, which is hopefully a secure base, and a child. It is through this secure base that children can truly gain independence and feel comfortable exploring their surroundings. This base provides the future foundation for relationships, love, and so much more. As Bulby, we are not born and raised in this world alone. As we grow and develop, we have people, mentors, if you will, to support, advise, and guide us through life. Bulby did not come up with the attachment theory all by himself. It was through the knowledge and challenges of others, in particular, Winnicott and Ainsworth, that Bowlby was able to connect the dots and communicate his attachment theory. I encourage you to discover the mentors 
in your life and reflect on how they shaped you into what you are today. Similarly, I encourage you to think about those you have mentored, either officially or unofficially, and reflect on how you might have changed their lives. Lastly, here are the references for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed this mini lecture and feel free to email me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I look forward to reading your thoughts and ideas on the Padlet and have a great rest of your day.